Hi, good evening and welcome to the Denver Water Lead Reduction Program virtual community meeting. Before we jump into it, I'd like to invite one of our interpreters, Nicholas, on the line uh, to let folks know how they can join the Spanish event. Nicholas. Um, bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Nicolás y seré su intérprete con Rosabel. Quiero agradecer a los organizadores de este evento por su compromiso con la justicia del lenguaje. La justicia del idioma y el lenguaje significa que todas las personas tienen derecho a hablar y ser escuchadas en el idioma de su corazón. Entonces, esta reunión será interpretada en inglés y en español simultáneamente. Para unirse a la llamada en español, por favor, presione asterisco cero. A los presentadores recordamos hablar, por favor, un ritmo de conversación para poder brindar una interpretación precisa del mensaje. Welcome, everyone. My name is Nicholas, and I will be an interpreter with Rosabel. I want to thank the organizers of this event for their commitment to language justice. Language justice means that people that have had the right to speak and be heard in the language of their heart. Therefore, this meeting will be interpreted in English and Spanish simultaneously. To join the meeting in Spanish, please dial star zero. Please remember to speak at a conversational pace so I can give you, I, I can render an accurate rendition of your message. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Nicholas. Uh, so if you received an invitation to this call, it's because your neighborhood is slated to receive um, lead service line replacements in 2024. So our goal with tonight is to give you an idea of what to expect before, during, and after construction. And if you are joining us on the phone and would like to join the meeting online, uh, we do have some slides and a video we'll be sharing. You can go to denverwater.org and look at the blue bar that's on the top of the screen where there is a link to join the meeting online. If you'd like to stay on the phone, no worries. You can still ask questions, participate, and we'll be uh, speaking in detail to everything that we're gonna be going through. Uh, so with that, just to make this a great experience for everyone, we've only got three guidelines for the meeting. That's to respect others, focus on the topic at hand. Again, we're here to talk about the construction piece of the lead reduction program. We've got other meetings on filter use, bigger overviews of the program. Tonight, we're trying to really focus on the lead service line replacement. And then last but not least, please participate in our question and answer sessions. We'll have a few of them tonight. And you're, of course, a key part of this meeting. We have multiple opportunities for you to ask questions. So you can press star three for questions. If you're on the phone, you can get in the question queue. You'll still be able to hear the meeting. And then if you're online, you can use the comment box to ask a question. I already see some questions coming in, which is great. We'll have plenty of time for that tonight. I wanna make sure we, we can get to your questions. Um, but again, we do only have so much time tonight. We can only cover so much without making this a three hour long meeting to go into every single detail. So uh, there is more information on this and other topics related to the lead reduction program online at denverwater.org slash lead. We have videos, instructional guides, program information, more frequently asked questions, um, and more on that site at denverwater.org slash lead. Um, but then for tonight, we've got three sections of content that we'll be going through. Uh, first, we'll talk about your service line, what it is, why it's being replaced, and when your property could potentially be up for replacement. So what kind of the what, why, and when. And then we'll move into an overview of what to expect from the process before, during, and after the service line replacement and that construction piece. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a review of the action steps that you need um, that you can take to make this process run as smooth as possible from your end of things. And again, before we launch into some of our content, I'll just remind everybody, if you're on the phone, you can press star three to get into the queue to ask a question. And if you're online, you can use the comment box. So with that, we're gonna start with that first piece on the what, who, why, and when of um, the lead service line. So I'll turn it over to um, one of our guests tonight, Gianna. Um, I've got with me a couple folks on the team, Gianna and Sarah, who are gonna go through 
the content with us tonight. We're lucky to have them. So I'll start with Gianna. Thank you so much, Rachel. Appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Um, so we want to start off talking about what is a service line? Um, water mains, water meters, service lines, it all can get really confusing. Um, your service line is a pipe that brings water from a Denver water owned water main in the street to the plumbing inside your home. The pipe that's shown on this green diagram. Um, a fun fact is that you do not, um, you own your service line. It is not Denver water property. And this is gonna become really relevant in a moment. Replacing your service line is the heart of the lead reduction program as it's a primary source of lead in drinking water. So why does our lead reduction, pro who does our lead reduction program affect? Um, it includes all Denver water customers who are suspected of having a lead service line. That means single family residences, duplexes, triplexes, as well as large multifamily dwellings um, and apartments. Denver Water is also working with businesses and schools to replace lead lines there. If we think you have a lead service line, we'll be reaching out and we wanna make sure that we get all of these lead lines out of the ground. Um, our motto is no lead left behind. So you're probably asking yourself, um, what should you do if you have um, lead service line, if you have your lead service line replaced and what's in it for you? Um, most importantly, your health and safety is what's in it for you. Denver Water is committed to delivering safe drinking water to our customers. The water we provide to you and all of our customers can get into the lead, but um, sorry, the water we provide to you and all of our customers does not contain lead, but the lead service lines to your homes can contain lead that connect to your homes. And this lead can contribute to higher levels of lead exposure, which can cause serious health problems if it enters too much into your body. The lead reduction program is a holistic approach that protects health and the safety of our current and future red generations and permanently removes lead from our service lines and our community. And second, this program has no direct cost to you. Even though you own your service line, Denver Water is taking care of the replacement at no direct cost to you. And this isn't a minor repair. If you were to replace your lead service line on your own, it would likely cost you between $5,000 and $10,000. You also may be wondering where are we working and where will we be in your neighborhood? Um, we have an interactive map for that and you can find that on our website at denverwater.org pipes. Once you're there, you can enter your address and the map will show you three valuable things the work that's being done there, which contractor is doing the work, as well as relevant dates that are available from our contractors. Thanks, Gianna, for that. And so just jumping into this first Q&A session, trying to take some bigger picture questions since we'll have a few more focused on each piece of the construction process. So just a first big picture question that Gianna, I'm gonna come to you on. A question online from Tom about, will you need to get in my crawl space? So I know we're going to talk more about that replacement process in a second, but I see a lot of questions along that line. So, John, if you can go ahead and give us an answer on that. Sure. Um, it's, it's possible. I'll start with that. Um, it's going to depend on everybody's home um, and how your home is laid out. And you're going to be going through a walkthrough process before the work even starts with one of our contractors, where they'll be able to identify where they need to get into your house, what areas and where your um, water line is connected to in your house. So it will just take some time for them to identify that and they'll work with you directly on that. Great. Thanks, Gianna. And then uh, next question here uh, for you, uh, Sarah, who we've also got on the line with us. Um, got a question online from Cheryl about how long does the process take? I think specifically that um, the actual lead service line replacement. Absolutely, good question. Uh, that actual process will take approximately eight hours, or we like to aim for it being no more than eight hours long, um, but it really will depend on your individual property and um, how that's laid out. Um, however, you can expect it to, to probably be that eight hour stretch. Great, 
Thanks, Sarah. And I'll just plug a couple maps um, that people can go to for more information since there's a couple questions coming in about that. So one map that Gianna mentioned is at denverwater.org slash pipes. And that's our construction schedule map where we've got kind of the information we have to date about upcoming areas for lead service line replacement, the general timing of when we expect that work to start, um, who's going to be doing the work in that area in terms of our different construction crews. Uh, so in terms of our schedule that's available right now, denverwater.org slash pipes is going to be the place to go for that. Another map we have, if anybody is wondering, well, do I have a lead service line? Am I in this program? And if you got a call or email from us inviting you to this meeting, you are included in the program. If you're still not sure and you go to denverwater.org slash lead, there's a map at the top of that where you can type in your address and it will pop up if you are in our program or not. So again, denverwater.org slash lead to go to the map to see if your property is in the program, denverwater.org slash pipes to see that construction schedule map. And one more plug, if anybody is on the phone and wants to join the meeting online to see all of our slides and content, you can go to denverwater.org and there'll be a blue box at the top of the screen with a link to the online meeting. Um, maybe one or two more questions before we move on. Uh, so this is another online question um, asking if um, customers will get informed if the water meter is copper or lead. So if we'll be letting folks know what that material of the meter is and really what um, that material of the service line is. So Sarah, I'll go to you for that one. Yes, thank you. Uh, you will um, be notified what material um, your infrastructure, your lines are made of. Um, so we do investigations, including potholing, um, in which we're actually in the street and sometimes on your property to get, get a visual of uh, the service line, and um, we will confirm also through the testing um, what uh, material your service lines are made from. And if your line is not made of lead, then you will be removed from the program. If it is made of lead, then we will move forward with replacing it for you. Thanks, Sarah. And one thing I'll add to that, too, is that we are looking to make sure the entire service line from the main in the street all the way up to your home or property is free of lead. Um, so maybe in the past, some folks might have had a partial replacement where maybe half of the service line was replaced. Um, and so there's not lead maybe in the entire service line, but we're looking to get all of the lead out. So we'll be checking that entire service line. And if any part of that is lead, um, we'll be doing that replacement just to make sure folks are aware of that. Uh, so with that, let's move on to the next section because I think a lot of folks will have questions about uh, what to expect leading up to replacement. So we're going to go over to Sarah. If um, Sarah, you can give us kind of the big picture overview of what folks can expect leading up to replacement, kind of the before construction piece. Absolutely. Thank you. So now we are going to dive into the meteor stuff. So we'll talk about what you can expect before, during, and after your lead service line replacement. So as a general overview, though, if you're familiar with construction, you know that there are a lot of moving parts and things really can vary from property to property. But what I'm going to provide this evening are the basics. So let's start with what you can expect before your replacement. As I mentioned, there are many pieces to this entire process. And so in this section, we will go through the six major steps to best prepare you for your replacement. Step one is the introduction letter. Some properties will receive a letter that lets you know that your service line is up for replacement, that you will be getting a water test kit in the mail, and what information will be coming next. Step two is the free water test. 
So we will send you this water test kit before your replacement and after you receive that introduction letter. One important point is that you will only get a test kit if you live in a single family home. Just it's this is because of uh, the nature of the sampling collection. We don't send kits to larger apartment complexes and multiplexes. Uh, we test those in a different way. So if you are interested in testing, um, you are also welcome to reach out to our customer care team and they can guide you on next steps. I do wanna say that it is crucial to follow the instructions in the test as they are laid out and to return your samples as quickly as possible. And you can find an instructional video at denverwater.org slash lead. Step three is the consent form. Next, uh, this, this step is probably one of the most important and it's the consent form. So since we don't own your service line, um, that is owned by you, uh, we need to get your permission to replace it. So that's kind of where we get the consent part. And how do you get that consent form? We make it available three different ways. First, we will send you one. Uh, when we identify your property for an upcoming replacement, we'll mail you a packet that includes a booklet overviewing the service line replacement process, and it will have a consent form. You can expect at least one reminder mailing, and then second, you can sign an electronic consent form on our website at denverwater.org slash consent. And finally, if we don't get your consigned consent form either of those ways, the construction team might actually knock on your door to get you to sign one right then and there. If you are not the homeowner, you can contact our customer care team and you can provide the name and contact information of your landlord or the property owner. And our customer care team can be reached at 303-893-2440. We really need to get that consent form um, from the property owner to replace the lead service line. Step four is the in-home visit. Uh, Gianna mentioned this. Um, everybody will have an in-home visit. So once we receive the signed consent form, the construction team will reach out to schedule an in-home visit. And it's then that we will talk to you about your replacement and um, identify any specific details about your property. So I do want to make a note here about timing. Weeks might go by between signing your consent form and hearing from us about your in-home visit. And we just want to let you know you don't have to worry. That is a very normal timeline. Uh, we typically send out consent forms a couple of months in advance of the work to give us time to process the hundreds of forms that we're getting back. And uh, the goal is to leave no lead behind. So during that in-home visit, a contractor uh, or a cruise will locate your service line. Like, so that's where it enters your home, where the water meter is, and we'll also plan for your property's specific layout and circumstances inside and outside. And they can also answer your questions. One of the things we need to make sure of is that we have a clear pathway to connections. Um, and so like, you know, if it connects in your basement or crawl space, we will be looking at that. And so if you are able to move any furniture or beds, um, it would be great if you can get those out of the way so that we can have a more direct route to get a visual on where it connects. Contractors will go over what will be impacted exterior um, on the exterior of the property, including trees, flowers, landscapes, and then also your interior drywall during the process. And they'll talk about what they will be fixing and replacing um, or restoring and what will be your responsibility to replace and fix. You might be wondering how that in-home visit gets scheduled. So the construction team will reach out to the contact listed on the consent form. So if your consent is gained um, in person during door-to-door -door knocking, crews will attempt to complete the in-home visit there on the spot. Who is the con construction team that will be replacing your deadline might be something you're asking. We do have a number of contractors that we work with to do replacement in addition to our Denver water crews. 
You can see their logos here and on our website. So at denverwater.org slash lead, you can confirm that you are speaking with um, one of our contractors. For those on the phone, contractors include AGL Construction, Five Star Energy Services, Apex Plumbing, and KR Swordfigger, uh, who has very recently been purchased and will be transitioning to Miller Pipeline, which is far easier for me to pronounce. You might see them going by KRS or Miller Pipe or the Miller Pipeline logo uh, earlier in this year. We do want to make sure we're protecting your customers, and so your safety and security is definitely of utmost importance to us. We have heard of people impersonating utility workers and other scams out there. To protect yourself, we suggest these four steps. Look for logos on hard hats, safety vests, and trucks. Ask for a business card. Use our interactive construction map that we mentioned earlier to identify who is working in your area. And if you would like to, you can call our Denver Water Customer Care. Step five, schedule replacement. There are two ways your service line replacement may be scheduled. The first, which is the most common, is that Denver Waters contractors, contractors will reach out to the contact listed on the consent form and schedule the replacement a few weeks in advance. But that will come after the in-home consultation. So you'll have that, that consultation first, and then someone will reach out to you to schedule the actual replacement. Each contractor sets up their schedules slightly differently from one another, but rest assured that you will receive advance notice so that you and the contractor can find a date that works best. The second way that we might schedule is that uh, you will receive a door hanger with contact information. If that's the case, you will need to call us to schedule. So if you don't reach out, nothing will happen. So if you get that door hanger, please reach out. And something really important to keep in mind is that someone 18 years of age or older, or older will need to be at the property the entire time the replacement is occurring, which is, as I mentioned earlier, about eight hours or typically a whole day. And finally, step six, investigations. This is the last thing that will happen before we show up at your house, and it is the on-site investigation. Here we conduct investigations of your service line outside, as I mentioned, that's called potholing, prior to replacement to confirm that there is lead. You don't have to do anything for potholing. Crews also conduct utility markings and may put up no parking signs as part of this work. And now I'll send it back to Rachel to allow time for a few questions on what to expect before replacement. We are gonna go into the Q&A. And so a reminder is that you will press uh, star three for questions. Um, and so now that we've covered the big picture details of what to expect leading up to replacements, we're going to provide more insight on what to expect during. And that will be after we ask a few questions. So we will start with a question that we received online, which is what material the new lines are made of. And um, I'm going to pass it over to Gianna to answer that question. Um, yeah, the new um, lines that are being in placed into um, the ground, connecting from our water line to your home are made of copper. Um, that is a standard for what we use to replace lead. Excellent. Thank you so much, Gianna. Um, we also have a question from the phone. Um, the question is, do we have to do the water testing? And yes, we do request that you perform the water test. Um, and that's why we send you a kit um, because all of that data and all of that info helps us understand um, the composition of your water line um, and the quality of the water.
All right. Okay, um, let's see if we have time to take one more question. All right. Um, the question is, when will we get our potholing results? And um, I'm happy to get, jump into that. So the potholing results um, will help us know uh, whether your service line is composed of lead or copper. And um, like I mentioned, if it is made of copper, then you will be removed from the program and you will receive a notification. If it is lead, then we will continue to work with you through those six steps that will occur uh, before the lead service line is replaced. All right. Now we are going to move on and talk about what is going to take place, what you can expect during the service line replacement. And I'm going to pass it over to Gianna to tell us a little bit more about what customers can expect. Thanks so much, Sarah. Appreciate it. Um, so what you can expect during your replacement. So the day has finally arrived for your service line to be replaced. And there are three key takeaways to remember about this day. Your street will be closed between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m and the road closure signs will be put up in advance. Our crews are very accommodating. If you have an appointment or still need to park in your driveway or the trash maybe needs to come through, they will be able to work with you. Um, we just ask that you ask them. Step two is that you need to prepare to be out of water all day. Crews will inform you in advance of the water shutoff and when it comes back on. You'll want to complete all of your water-related routines such as filling water bottles, taking a shower, cooking, filling pitchers, doing your dishes, or laundry. Be sure to turn on your cold water periodically to check for the running water. You do not want to turn on your water-related appliances or sprinkler system during this time. And three, someone of 18 years of age or older must be on site all day. And we understand that construction work can be very disruptive and life is really busy, but it is important that you do not leave during construction. We need you to be home so that we can address any issues that may arise and also do a final walkthrough when your work is completed. And now I'd like to share with you all a short video that provides a good overview of what to expect during the lead service line replacement process. This will provide the details such as when to move your car and what different techniques are used to replace the lead service line. The video has a great narration for those of you on the phone, so don't worry. There are three important things you'll need to know on the day of your service line replacement. First, your water service will be turned off for up to eight hours, so please plan accordingly. Second, the property owner or a designee who is 18 or older must be on site the entire time. Third, portions of your street will be closed from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., so you'll need to move your vehicles in the morning to give construction crews room to park. And remember, you may be doing several service line replacements on the same street, so construction equipment could be in your neighborhood for a few weeks. Service line replacement starts by using an excavator to dig a hole in the street. Crews will then use shovels to dig down to reach the water main. This is to locate where the old lead service line connects to the water main. You'll also dig a second hole around the water meter in your yard. This is another access point to reach the service line. Crews will then go inside your house. We'll use a side entrance or back door if possible and put down a cover to protect the floor. The pull-through technique is a common method to replace a lead service line. This involves disconnecting the old service line from the water main in the street. And then inside your house, crews will detach the service line from where it connects to your home's plumbing. We'll then feed a cable through the old service line and attach it to a coil of new copper pipe. The next step involves using an excavator on the street. The machine pulls the cable and the old lead service line through the ground. 
the new copper service line gets pulled through with it. Then workers connect the new copper line to the water main. In the directional boring technique, the old lead service line is left in the ground and abandoned. Crews will disconnect it from the water main and your home's plumbing so it can no longer be used. We'll then bring in a boring machine and park it on the edge of the property. Workers use this machine to bore a hole for the new service line. The boring machine drills until it reaches a designated location in the basement or crawl space. Crews attach the new copper service line to the drill and pull it back through the hole. Workers then connect the new line to the water main. We'll check all new connections to make sure they're secure. These techniques avoid having to dig a trench through your yard. However, there are some rare cases when digging a trench is required. The final step of the replacement process involves connecting the new copper service line to your indoor plumbing, and then sending water through the new pipe to your home. If your water meter was located inside your house, it will most likely be moved outside during construction. This will make it easier for us to access in the future. Well, hi all. We're going to uh, give just a few seconds for um, the folks on our Spanish a meeting to catch up on the audio and video. And then we've just got a couple technical difficulties with audio on the back end here. Um, so we'll keep things moving as best we can and try to work through these as we go along. So appreciate your patience. I think we're at a good place now since we just watched that video and that was a lot of information to process. We can kind of slowly tee, tee up our next Q&A session here since we just went through all of the kind of that what to expect during construction piece. So um, Sarah, I'm going to come to you with a question um, uh, from someone online, Jerry, who's asking, once the service lines are replaced, will the water be safe to drink? Hi, Jerry. Uh, yes, uh, the water will be safe to drink, but we do recommend that you continue to use your filter for six more months. Uh, you will also receive a letter that um, uh, lets you opt in to receive a water test kit, and you are welcome to do another test to ensure that um, there is no lead in the water. Great. Thanks, Sarah. And then Gianna, now that we can wonderfully hear you again, I'm gonna to come to you with a question um, from someone we've got on the phone, uh, Jamie, who's got a question about um, water test kit results. So we'll see if we can uh, get Jamie on the line here. Jamie, can you hear us? And if so, please go ahead and ask your question. Yep, I'm here, thanks. So I sent my test in and I never got anything back. Is there anyone I can follow up with for results? Yeah, of course. Thanks for that question, Jamie. I'm um, sorry that you haven't received those yet, um, but you can reach out to Denver Water Customer Care um, by calling them um, and they'll be able to look into your account and look into that letter and see where the status is. Um, hopefully, if you have it, it's only been a couple of weeks. If that's only been a couple of weeks, hopefully you'll receive it shortly. Um, but if it has been longer than that, definitely give customer care a call um, and they'll be able to assist you with that. Great, thanks Gianna. And then um, just kind of a quick refresh on our kind of plugs that we'll give for some resources we've got. So if you go to denverwater.org slash pipes, uh, you'll be able to see the latest that we've got on our construction scheduling in terms of um, when your line will be replaced. And then you should be getting some information in the mail from us a couple months before that replacement is going to be scheduled. And you'll have that in-home visit with the uh, construction team before the replacement happens. Um, another question we've got that I'm going to go to Sarah on. Um, it's a question from Justin online. If you can kind of give us that time frame for repairs. Yes, um, for the repairs. So what you can expect is for the process um, for the actual lead service line replacement to take 
approximately eight hours. And um, then you will be out of water during that period. Then as far as repairs, so restoration to um, disturbances that Denver Water is taking responsibility to fix, um, that just actually kind of depends on the weather. So um, if it comes to um, restoration of the, the street um, and your landscaping, some that, sometimes that can take a little bit of time, um, sometimes a few months, but uh, we are active during the spring and summer season. Um, and so if you're having your lead surface line replaced, it should be followed up by those restoration activities shortly after. Great. Thanks so much, Sarah. Let's see if we, we've got a couple more Q&A sessions less, um, left. And um, so let's try to go ahead and get into that content. Uh, so Sarah, I'm going to turn it over to you if you can talk about the um, kind of what to expect after that construction piece. And I'm seeing we might have some audio issues going on. I'm not sure if that's for everybody. Um, again, we're doing some troubleshooting on the back end. So let's move forward. And um, for now, if Sarah, you can jump into that um, uh, after service line replacement piece. Yes, happy to. So after watching the video describing the replacement process, we know that you might be wondering about how to deal with a hole or two in your front yard and what comes next. <clears throat> there are three important pieces that will take place after your service line replacement, and we will need your help with some of these actually. So those three are flushing, restoration, and retesting. So first we're gonna talk about flushing. What do we mean by that? It's not about your toilets, but instead about running your faucets, um, your sinks, your bathtub to flush out residual debris and lead particles left behind after construction. During construction, it's possible for lead particles and other debris to get trapped, which can lead temporarily to higher levels of lead as well as other plumbing issues. So immediately after a replacement, our crews, contractors will do an exterior and interior flush of your pipes. So they will be actually starting outside and then move inside. And in total, that will take about 30 minutes. But after they leave, what can you do? We actually recommend that for about a month following replacement, you do a brief five or so minute flush when the water hasn't been used for several hours. So that could be in the morning, or maybe if you um, go to work once you return home. We also recommend that you regularly clean the aerators or those like little screens on your interior faucets, which can collect debris over time. And then we re recommend just repeating this process periodically for 30 days. So that's flushing. Let's talk a little bit about restoration. And here we're talking restoration to your landscaping, the street and interior of your home. Of course, we are aiming to minimize impacts. Uh, we are committed to being a, a good neighbor um, during your service line replacement. Uh, we will clean up any messes created and we'll, we'll restore any disrupted ground to a level service level surface. So let's start with the landscaping portion. After the pipe replacement is done, we will pour dirt back into the hole in your yard and cover up with a new cover up the new water meter. We'll also make sure that that water meter is at the original surface level. A landscaping crew will come back uh, if needed and do additional restoration work. So this could include new sod or reseeding if the grass was impacted. We'll also put rock and mulch back in place. Uh, if irrigation lines are impacted, those will also be repaired. This is construction and so impacts are inevitable uh, and they will be discussed during your in-home visit that we talked about during the before process. Uh, we do have a tip though. So if you have landscaping or plants that you would like to salvage or dig up yourself before construction, be sure to ask the contractor to help you identify um, those areas during your in-home visit. 
to ensure the best results. Timing of landscape restoration, as I mentioned before during the Q&A, really does depend on a lot of different factors. So the season, the outside temperature, and our crew's work schedules. So warm weather is just, it's needed for the grass and sod. And so you just kind of sometimes have to wait a little bit. Next, we'll talk about what happens in your yard, or next, sorry, we'll talk about uh, what happens in the street. Here, uh, crews will fill in the hole and put down a temporary patch, is what we call it, so the road is safe. And then a paving crew will come back later to do a permanent repair. As you can see in this photo, this is not a complete street paving. These are permanent asphalt asphalt repairs where the hole was dug. Just like landscape restoration to ensure best results, uh, the timing of street repair really depends on our crew's work schedules and the season. Uh, we need warm weather for those permanent asphalt repairs. And finally, what does restoration look like inside your home? Any impacts to the interior of the home, such as drywall or flooring, will be the responsibility of the homeowner. Wonderful. Thanks, Sarah. So the final step to prepare um, for after using your um, after your service line is replaced is um, filter use and retesting. Um, first, we can ask you that you continue using your filter for drinking, cooking and making infant formula um, up to six months after your replacement. Denver Water will continue to send you one more replacement filter after um, your lead line is completed for your pitcher. And then after six months, you can keep your filter, throw it away, or recycle it. Second, you want to be on the lookout for a postcard reminder to request a free water test kit. We will send this to you in about four months after your replacement. And you're probably wondering, well, why do I need to test? And not only does the water test verify that lead levels have been reduced, but the results can also be very helpful to identify other sources of lead in faucets, fixtures, or other internal um, plumbing fixtures inside your home. And I'm going to turn it back over to Rachel. Great. Thanks, Gianna. And I have had some audio issues during the meeting. I think a lot of you have noticed. So please, if um, as we move forward, you can't hear me, please put that in the online chat and we'll make sure uh, to adjust as time goes on. So appreciate everybody's patience with that um, as we work through those backend uh, technology issues. So just wanna take some more uh, questions in the time we have left before we wrap it up. Um, I will just um, remind everybody, since we've got a couple of questions on this, that. Um, you can opt out at any time before that replacement actually happens, even if you have signed the consent form. So I know we've got at least one question about, um, say you've signed the consent form and you do that pre-construction visit before the replacement and uh, you just learn some things about the, the impacts to your specific property that you are not comfortable with. Um, in that pre-construction at home visit, you can opt out. Um, of course, we will try to work with you, um, see what we can do to work through any concerns that you have because we um, really ultimately need to get the lead out and do the replacement, but um, you do own that service line and it is, of course, your uh, place to kind of let us proceed with work on your property. Uh, so want to make sure folks are aware of that. And um, also just a couple other questions from content that we've covered, but it's very important. We want to make sure folks know um, you will absolutely be notified prior to the replacement. Um, so I think it was Sarah who talked through, you should be getting something in the mail a couple months before work is happening in your area. We will need you to sign that consent form to let us do the work. And then you'll get that in-home visit prior to any construction happening. And then from there, you'll schedule the replacement. And we try to be as flexible as we can with that scheduling. We know people have busy lives, lots going on. So we'll work with you to the extent that we can. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and give a question over to you, Gianna, on what happens if um, the landscaping 
replacement um, if that's not properly restored. If you can give us some more information on um, that kind of landscaping post replacement piece, Gianna. Definitely. Um, if it's not restored properly, we recommend that you reach out to our customer care team. And this is something that we will investigate with the contractor. Um, also a good idea to take before and after pictures as well. Um, so you have um, that record of what things looked like before. Um, we are trying to replace things and restore things to the best as possible as they were before. Um, but the best thing you can do is reach out to our customer care team and they'll um, open an investigation to look at that um, and see what we can do to help you. Great. Thanks, Gianna. Also seeing just a couple questions about impacts to trees and landscaping. So just a reminder on that, um, the question around, will there be an impact to trees and landscaping? The answer is possibly. We'll have to come out and look at your specific property and where everything's located in relation to the service line. Um, so that's definitely gonna be part of the pre-construction in-home visit to talk through that. Um, we are really trying to avoid impacts to those pieces, especially to trees. Um, we wanna keep that tree canopy as healthy as we can. So again, that's gonna be part of that pre-construction visit, but um, we will try to minim minimize impacts to any extent possible. And again, you can make decisions based on what you hear at that pre-construction uh, visit at your home. And then um, next question, we've got um, someone on the phone. I think it's Virgil with a question about how to tell if the pipes have been replaced and how to tell if that work has already been done. So I'm going to turn that question over to you, Sarah. And Virgil, if you are on the line with us and can hear us, please go ahead and ask that question. Make sure we've got your, your full question. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah, we had the pipes uh, replaced from the street into the house in um, December of 2022. And they put copper. Do you guys have record of that so that we don't have to go through any of it? That's a really good question, Virgil. And I, I wish that we just had records or the city and county of Denver had records of all of those replacements, but um, it's just inconsistent. And so that's why we do a very thorough investigative process um, in which we are, as I mentioned, potholing and getting a visual on the uh, service line. And then we are also doing that, that water testing. So we're gonna take those data points to confirm that, yes, Yes, indeed, your entire service line from the main all the way to your house was replaced. In some cases, there's a partial replacement. It might be from the main to the meter, and then the remaining portion um, might be made of lead. And so we just really want to confirm. And, you know, it's really important that if we do confirm that you have a lead service line, really consider allowing us to do this replacement. It is a great opportunity to have something that actually would typically be the responsibility of the homeowner or property owner to do themselves. And um, here we are, we are going to do it for you. And it's really for the health of you and your family. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, so I just want to kind of do a quick refresh with Gianna on um, some of the different pieces of the piping infrastructure at play here, because we've got some questions about the water main in the street and if that's lead or not. And then, of course, the service line that connects that water main up to the home and some of the material differences there if um, customers really need to be concerned about both. So Gianna, if you don't mind to just give us a breakdown on um, kind of those differences and the what people can expect in terms of the potential material of the water main versus the service line. Yeah, of course, no problem. Um, so the water main that runs through the street that is owned by Denver Water um, does not have any kind of lead in it. Um, no lead pipes, um, no lead fixtures. Um, but the connection from the um, 
from the water main to your home, that's where the lead can occur. Um, and we also do not have any lead in our drinking water. Um, all of our water comes from the mountains. There's no lead up in the mountains. Um, and then goes through our delivery system, our treatment system, and then out to you to your home. Um, so really the only place the lead can get introduced is in that service line that is owned by you as the property, property owner. Great, thanks, thanks Gianna. Um, so just a couple more questions um, before we wrap it up here. Um, we've got a question online from Sarah about if we need to get online and make the appointment for the contractors to evaluate the service line. Sarah, do you mind kind of giving that refresh on both um, the investigations piece to evaluate the material of the service line and then um, kind of what customers can expect in terms of communications. I think the short answer is we will contact you so you don't need to proactively reach out to us, but um, Sarah, I think you can give the best comprehensive answer to that. Sure. Uh, so we have several contractors that will be performing the replacement and each of them has a slightly different process. But just like Rachel said, they are going to be reaching out to you. So um, they might have someone call um, and they will try to schedule uh, the best time and date to perform that replacement. Um, in other cases, you might receive a door hanger and that will um, provide you with a number to call so that you can schedule the replacement. So in the, in the case that you get a door hanger and it's prompting you to call back, make sure you do that. But really the, the first thing um, is that you will get a call or you will get that door hanger that will be us reaching out to you to make that schedule. Great, thanks, Sarah. We've got another question online about how long it's going to take us to replace all of the lead service lines. So that is a great question. Um, again, if you were invited to this call via phone or email, it's because we are planning to come to you this year. A big picture with our program. So we started the program in 2020 with the expectation that it would take us until 2035 to get all of the 64 to 84,000 uh, lead service line replaced. Again, that's our estimate. And we're, we've been doing everything we can to try to speed that up. So we've been replacing about 5,000 or more service lines each year so far. And we've also taken some steps like get federal funding to help speed up the replace of the work. So we've been able as of now to shave a couple years off of that. Uh, so we are still as of today looking at um, several more years until we can really be completely done. And we're not really, um, again, going to be stopping until we can make sure we've gotten all of the lead out. Uh, so again, always looking for ways we can shorten the program for all of our customers. Um, but right now we are looking at a little bit less than a decade out to get all of those 64 to 84,000 service lines replaced. And then uh, another question here coming to you, Gianna. So um, it's uh, Sarah online is asking that uh, the results are showing no lead. I think that means from the water test kit results. And those are showing no lead. So does that mean we are in the service line? I think that's a great question because those water test results can mean a couple different things. So if you can just break that down for us, if someone gets uh, no lead in their water test results, what that means for them. Yeah, um, that is a great question. Um, that's obviously a really good sign if you're not having any lead showing up in your water testing kit, um, and that really helps add to our data um, for your home specifically um, to help us complete that inv investigation. Um, we will still do some potholing to, again, uh, visually confirm, as Sarah said, to make sure that there's not in the, even an inch of lead somewhere um, within that service line that connects from the water main into your home. Um, but that is a really good sign, but we still want to make sure and we'll do our due diligence to make sure that it is not there. Are, there is not any lead um, anywhere in your service line. Thanks, uh, Gianna. That's really helpful information. And I think it's um, been, been good for me to wrap my head around the fact that those water sample uh, test kits are extremely valuable and they are also the snapshot in time 
of what's um, happening with um, the water in your home at that very moment. So that is why if those tests come back and show no lead, we're going to take that extra step of doing that visual inspection just to make sure we aren't leaving any lead in that service line. If those test results come back and show that, yes, there is lead in your service line, we will not do that visual inspection. Again, we are trying to make it uh, as smooth as possible for all of you. And um, we are coming to the top of the hour here. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Gianna to wrap us up with a refresh on those key action steps for all of our customers that you'll need to be aware of and to do just to make this as smooth as possible for you. So I'll turn it over to you, Gianna. Sure. Um, so to recap and highlight what we talked about today, there are four action items that we hope that you really take away. Um, first is that we ask that you complete the water test kit if you receive one before your replacement. Two, we ask you as the property owner to sign and return the consent form so we can move forward with the work and the replacement. And again, you can sign that form digitally online at denverwater.org consent. Three, if you're a renter, please contact Denver Water and reach out to your landlord or the property owner to make sure that they are engaged with us so we can move forward with the replacement process. We cannot do that. Um, we cannot do the replacement without the property owner's signed consent. And finally, after the replacement, please continue to use your filter um, and your pitcher for added protection and watch for the water test kit postcard in the mail to to request that final um, free kit to retest your water after replacement. Um, and we also encourage you to sign up um, for our updates by visiting denverwater.org slash lead. And you can also reach out to us via email with any other questions at lead at denverwater.org. And that email is lead, L-E-A-D, at denverwater.org or you also can call our customer care line and that number is 303-893-2444 for any other additional questions. And if you have a neighbor or possibly a friend that does not speak English, we encourage them to please reach out to us. Um, we have Spanish speakers, other language speakers in our customer care team. Um, we also have some support to provide information about the lead reduction program in other languages. And we're eager to support everyone's participation in the program. And as part of this effort, the lead reduction website is also available in Spanish and English. And thank you all so much for your time this evening. We look forward to working with you to replace your lead service line. I hope you have a great rest of the night and thank you for um, standing by with us through those technical difficulties today um, and have a great rest of your week. Bye.